Hello, I'm going to be going over Clip Studio Paint mobile version, which I'm using on iPad Pro 12.9, and I'll try to go some of the things that could be helpful for people who are not uh, aware of what the iPad could be like, or are coming from the full desktop version, which is uh, which was me uh, pretty recent. The first thing that you need to know is the fact that Clip Studio Paint on desktop is a little bit different from the iPad version because it's a subscription based and uh, one of the awesome things that Clip Studio Paint does is that they give you three months for free and uh, you can uh, use the software for three months and not pay for it and try it out and see if you like it and uh, the software itself is pretty awesome because it pretty much copies whatever is on the desktop so let's get into it the very first and quick thing that you can notice is that it's very minimized and they're trying uh, that to do that specifically because sometimes there's less screen space um, on the iPad version. Reason being is because the screens are not that big. So for example, a laptop could be 16 point inches. But an iPad can only go up to 12.9 unless you connect a secondary monitor, but it's not really ideal when you're trying to draw. So for example, um, if you want to try to uh, not minimize it and start out with the version that is going to be more like the desktop, you can actually go into properties. So if you click on the Clip Studio logo, you go into preferences, and in interface, you can actually adjust. This says layout, switch to tablet interface. So once you turn it off, uh, it's going to bring back all the tools that are like in the desktop version, depending on how much screen uh, space you have. So it's useful for me, for example, because I have a, an iPad 12.9 that is like pretty big and it's one of the biggest screen sizes that you could get but for someone who's using the regular iPad or the iPad mini it's not going to be as useful. So let's go over uh, back to the normal layout for a layout for tablet and now uh, we'll go over some of the docking options that Clip Student offers. So on the left side these are most of the tools that you're going to be using and as you can see you can actually uh, extend or make it smaller depending on your preference so I like to keep the tools pretty small but you can actually move it up here and maybe you want to drag color at the bottom part uh, it, it's really up to you but uh, here's a quick thing that you need to remember is uh, at the very top on the left side you have three uh, you have two um, arrows that are going to hide an entire subtool, right? Uh, and it goes for both of these, right? But once you open it, you can see that it's extending, right? If you don't want it to be extending, you have to click the small arrow that is not two of them, just one. So it's going to be toggling on and off. So you have that option as well. Some of the things that uh, you need to keep in mind is that some of these subtools are actually connected. Uh, so for example, if I go into a layer, right, and I want to move the layer out, I uh, hold it and I try to move it, right? I can move it all the way to the right, which I actually prefer to have layers on the right side. As you can see, not only the layer, but also the layer property is moved and uh, that's just the nature of clips to the paint some of the tools are connected but here's the thing what that you can do if you click on the three uh, lines on the tool you can actually hide some of these things so for example hide layer property palette uh, I know that I'm not going to be using it for example and I just click it now I only have the layers and I can go back and uh, try to bring it back if you want a window and all of these are going to be the same things that are being hidden or shown so for example I can just go back and go layer property and they click on it and now I have the layer property shown on again 
Everything is customizable and it's uh, pretty amazing. So for example, I like to have layers on the left side when I use my computer, but here it's probably the best if you're a righty. I'm a righty. Um, it's best to keep the things on the left side because I can actually use my left hand and click and tap buttons that are going to be on the left side. So I'll actually drag it all the way back and now I'm going to extend it. As you can see, I can actually move the size of the UI as well uh, and extend canvas or hide the canvas. So let's go here and let's say I do not use materials, right? I don't like it. So I can actually extend it as a separate piece, which is also pretty awesome. And I can also move it around for the size that I need. And some of the tools have it, some of them don't. I have color pattern, material, I have an X button. If I click the X button, it's going to be gone. To bring it back, I have to go again, window, and I can just bring it back. So for example, I do not use color history, right? And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go into uh, settings right here, and I just go hide color history palette, and it's going to be completely gone again and I don't use color sets hide color sets so now I'm only going to have the color wheel but here's the problem I have the color wheel uh, that is separate now I have to click each time to get to each of these I don't like that so I can go into color extend it go into layer and bring the color back so for example I want it to be on top of the layer so now I can just drag this and now I have the color wheel and the layer under it and I can put something third underneath of it I uh, do not have the access to the keyboard for example most of the people don't I can just drop the ink stuff right here And then I can just drop it all the way back at the bottom. Now I have all of the settings for the brushes and I can just drag it in right here, drag it in right here and I can have access to all of these things and I can just use the size right on the screen. So pretty much most of the tools are almost the same um, but uh, there's a little tool on the top that is uh, going to be a little bit different and uh, it's this one so if I click on it I can actually use my finger only as a moving tool of the canvas I'm using one of my fingers right now to move the tool around if I turn it off I'm going to be using it as a drawing tool so it's pretty uh, d it's a preference difference and for example I like to use the moving with my finger I don't have to you know um, scribble accidentally with my finger. So Clip Studio Paint also comes with hand gestures which is pretty awesome because um, obviously you want to use the screen uh, touch screen to make some of the things easier for yourself. So if I go and I, for example, choose a, a tool and I go into brush, right? And I go, all right, I'll just pick a bit husky or smooth. And I want it to be 150, right? Pretty awesome. It already shows the size so I can have a reference of what the size is going to be like. So I already have the layer selected, I already have the color. I can just doodle, right? And then if I do two fingers, it's going to be uh, Command Z. If I do three fingers, it's going to be uh, Redo, which is also pretty cool. Pretty much the same as any other um, iPad software. So, but if you're new and you're coming to iPad for the first time, uh, it'll be a little bit confusing. So. If you want to zoom in or zoom out, I use two of my fingers and I just uh, zoom in with two of my fingers. If I want to rotate, I do the same thing, just two fingers and I can just move it around and it's pretty useful.
it's pretty easy. It's a, a lot easier to do uh, on the iPad than doing it in Photoshop or something like that. Also, uh, a pretty cool thing is, for example, if I click here, the three lines, uh, it's actually going to have me the same exact things that are on the top of the screen. So if you have a small screen and you don't want this to be showing, you can actually go into here and just click hide bar or show mini bar, right? I don't want it to be all the way there. I want to save screen size. I want to draw and uh, there you go. You saved a little bit of screen size. And I don't want it to be so huge. I do like this and then that's it. You can also customize your hand gestures. So you, you can see the little button that is for uh, touch. You, if you click the arrows, you can actually set tool as a finger, use it as a different tool, but at the very bottom it says touch gesture settings. So if you click that, you can customize some of the things that are going to be used as a touch interface. It's not too much, but it's pretty simplified enough so that uh, people can use it freely, right? If you want to go back to the main menu that the home screen for Clip Studio Paint, you can click right here and now it's going to be showing you the things that are usually shut up when you open Clip Studio Paint. And then to return to paint, you can just go return to paint. Next button is just, uh, you know, new for new file and then you can uh, create something out of here. Here is going to be uh, my file system for iPad so I can save or move around things uh, and we're just pretty much open a new file if I want to. The third button is actually a save button so that you don't have to keep clicking on this and then click file and click save. You can actually just click this third button and it's going to be throw you into the file system immediately so that you can just save your illustration. So here is the back and the forward button, which is uh, probably not going to be used too much because you can use your finger control. This next button is actually a clear button. So if I want to draw and I draw a new layer and I don't like the layer, I can just click this and it's going to clean the entire layer, which is pretty useful because usually you use a command A and then delete on your keyboard but here it's just one button right next to the canvas. This button is actually going to to fill. Uh, the next button is grayed out but the reason being is because uh, it's actually connected to selection. So for example if I click here and I do the selection now it's not grayed out. As you can see it's actually a clear um, button but for the outside so if I select here and I do the delete, it's going to delete whatever is outside of that box, which is pretty useful. Pretty much like a mask, but uh, it's a permanent mask. And uh, for the iPad, if you want to deselect, obviously you can do Command D if you don't have the keyboard, uh, this button is actually going to do the trick. So if you want to transform the layer, you can just click this button next to the fill and now you have exactly the same uh, options that you have on your computer and you want to make it bigger or you can rotate it and you can just fix it to whatever thing you want. Hello, uh, just really quick uh, tip. If you don't know how to use layers in uh, iPad version, the easiest thing is that um, most of the options, if you select a layer, you just hold down on it and it's going to give you all of the options that are usually kind of needed for the layer or whatever you want with it. So it's pretty useful. And uh, if you want to select multiple layers, then you just have to click on the left side of the panel of the layer. And then you can hold down again and then you can, for example, create a folder. And uh, that's it. Pretty quick one. So I finished my quick sketch and I just wanted to uh, go over how to save it very quickly. So uh, in theory, you just can go up there at the top of the menu bar and you just go file and you can go uh, save as or 
you can click the button that I was telling you about before. So for example, if I make a new layer uh, right here at the top, it's uh, showing up and usually it means it saves, but I also um, can close the window if I have multiple files open. And um, if you go into file and save and save as, uh, there are different formats. So if I wanna keep working on the Clip Studio format, then I just do that one. I can save as a PNG and basically export it. And uh, I believe there's a quick share at the very bottom, which is pretty cool. So if I do a quick share, Now I can actually send this picture, someone in message, someone on Instagram, I can drop file it in any other format and drop it into Drive, I can do it in Photoshop, or I can just save the image and uh, with no hustle. But the best way would be to save the file first, you have to like do Clip Studio format, and let's call it Illustration 3 Sketch. And then I do OK. And so I now am presented with the file system that the iPad is offering. And in Clip Studio Paint, I can uh, either create a new folder at the very top. So let's make a folder and call it one. And now I have one folder and I can say, OK, well, that's my illustration. And I go save. And so now if I go back into the file structure, I can actually uh, just look at it and it's gonna show up as a thumbnail so it's right here and the cool thing is that um, I can also save in uh, Photoshop format so if I wanna open into Photoshop later on I can do save as and go very bottom it says Photoshop document and save it into the same folder and now I'm gonna have two items and uh, one is clip studio paint one is sketch uh, that is made in Photoshop, so I can drag and drop that and uh, keep fixing it if I want to make color adjustments or whatever it is that I want. And uh, quick note uh, before you go, uh, little options uh, that are available to you are um, if you want to merge down quickly, like a layer, there's a specific button here that I can hold and I just keep merging down layers, which is pretty cool. And uh, it makes the work way easier and faster. So uh, yeah, uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I can probably answer them. And uh, yeah, happy painting. Have a good one.